Hi, I'm Skip Bird with the Westminster Astronomy Club. Uh, they've been kind enough, the uh, Novak people have been kind enough to invite one of the competing astronomy clubs here. So I'll get the commercial over right away. If you want to join our club, there's flyers over there. We live in Westminster, Maryland, or uh, Maryland area, so there's no really competition. But we do a lot of outreach. Last year I talked about uh, why Chicken Little was right and uh, the night sky network. I'll hit on both of those just a little bit as I go, but mostly I'm going to talk about the Comet Ison. If you saw the uh, blurb for it, the Great Comet is coming, the Great Comet is coming, maybe. All right? And we'll go a little bit more. We'll talk about when it's coming, when to look, where to look, whether or not you're going to see anything. We do know one thing, and I get the, uh, the, the, the final joke out of the way uh, at the start, is comets are like cats, OK? They all have tails, and they do as they darn well please, OK? So this comet, we, we're guessing. You'll see that all the time. I don't care about the end of the world. It's going to be so bright during the daytime, you'll need sunglasses and all that. That's all guesswork. We'll talk about a website which should have what I call real information on it. That type of stuff, we'll even look at a couple of those to, to help you guys out. And we'll also talk about how to answer the questions that the public's going to come up with, like he already did, you know? All right? And, and also, because I like to have fun, we will make a comment, which is pretty easy, pretty simple, so that you can do it and impress the people who come out to your program, especially if it's cloudy and you can't see anything. Okay? So I, I cover all approaches. Uh, a couple of things come up with, I'll actually talk about astronomy and sky and telescope. They both have really nice maps of where it's going to be and things along those lines. Basically for the next month, it's going to be near Mars. And Mars and ice, Comet Ison are going to be following each other through the sky. So uh, a couple, I got up the other morning, couldn't find Mars, so I didn't see, didn't even try to find Comet Ison. Somebody said they found Mars, but they couldn't see the comet. It's still pretty dim, so I wouldn't worry about it right now. But coming up in October, roughly in October, it should be starting to get bright enough to be seen with small telescopes and binoculars. Notice I got my fingers crossed. I got my finger, I got two sets of toes, my legs, my arms, everything. See, I'm hoping. It'd be nice. And you've all heard that it's, like I said earlier, it's the comet of the century, right? Yes. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to make sure everybody's out there. If not, I have the mighty awakening or closing hammer. Okay. This comet said, not bad. We've only been. 13 years into the century, so it can be the greatest comet of all time, of, or not all time, but of the century. That's not a problem. It doesn't have really any competition, at least in the northern hemisphere. Anybody been south in the last uh, 10 years, below the equator? All right, good job. Did you see Comet McNaught, Lovejoy, any of those? Oh, man. Uh, I've seen the pictures. I actually saw Comet McNaught from an airplane as I was going into Chicago. Uh, just before it went into the cloud bank, but we got everybody on that side to look at, so we got to see this little bitty thing about like that. So we got to see a little bit of that, and then I found out, you know, later on I should have moved to South America for the year. Uh, so, and I actually, we'll see some pictures of it from Australia and some other places, so it's pretty cool. Hopefully it will be that good. Hopefully. Because that means it'll be in the northern hemisphere. I do not understand why, maybe one of you astrophysics majors can tell me why, most of the really, really, really good comets have to come in from the north and go out of the south. You know? I don't know. They got something against us? Did we not pay our utility bills? What? What's going on there? All right. So I don't know. So we'll figure it out. Whoop. Hey, one too many. There we go. All right. Those of you who've been out here for the first time or the second time who've actually gone outside and looked up into the sky, you've seen this thing called the, what are they called? The Milky Way? Yeah. Is that what it is, the Milky Way? The great galaxy of our home, our home galaxy from the inside. And I think Calvin has a wonderful take on that, you know. Those of you who can read, I won't read it to you, but those of you who can't read, I will read it to you. The cloud of stars is our galaxy. The Milky Way, our solar system, is on the edge of it. We all know that. We hurl through an incomprehensible darkness. In cosmic terms, we are subatomic particles and a grain of sand on an infinite beach. Now, this is from a six-year-old, okay, a six-year-old. I have to look up some of the words he uses, okay. And then he's looking up there, and then, of course, he brings it all back down to Earth and says, I wonder what's on TV now. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. So he does that, keeps it on there. So, yes, if you think about everything that's going on, that's about what we are. But it's really amazing that uh, we get to see stuff like comets, we get to see stuff like uh, 
meteors we have actually can still go outside and see what we saw last night and the night before last. Okay? A hundred years from now, you may not even be able to see that from here. Okay? I'm not going to go into the IDA and uh, all that stuff, but if you have kids and you want them to see the dark skies at some time, besides on the, like the South Pole, North Pole, or out in the middle of Alaska, or wherever, you better get doing something about it now. Of course, we're also going to talk about along with Comet Ison, we're going to talk about another comet, 2012 Sidling Springs, which, according to these guys, may actually get close to Mars. We're going to talk about that after we get done with Ison. I'm going to talk about him. It might, even there's this non, non-zero, very unlikely, high percentage chance that it's going to miss, or that it will miss Mars, but there's very small, very small, small percentage that Sidling Springs won the 2012 might actually impact Mars. Okay? That would be cool, as long as it hits there and not here. Okay? But then again, you know, again, it's, it's, that would be, like the man said earlier, that would be two comets plowing into two planets within the last hundred years. That never, ever, ever, ever happens. So let's all go play the lottery. So, all right, you can see here he's running through Mars. He found everybody and he scared himself and ran off. So now let's continue on down here. This is what we're hoping for. That at sunset or sunrise, okay? Now we all know it's better at sunset because more people are awake at 5 p.m. than they are at 5 a.m. I don't know why, but that's the way it works out. We're all going to hope we're going to look out to the west or the east, actually the east, and we're going to see that, right? Okay? I hope so. Because if it comes up and looks like this, do you see the comet? Right there? Right there? Yep, yep. see the city. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's normal. That's, you will see that, but that, there's the comet, okay? That's not the comet, all right? One of those two is going to happen. We don't know which. We won't know. We'll have some better guesstimates as he gets closer when I talk about the, which website to go to uh, to look to get the real information. Then uh, you can do it. But those are our choices, basically. The public is thinking that, oh, we're going to have this. All right. That's McNaught, by the way. We hope we have this. All right. But we know better than to say, oh, come out. We're going to, oh, it's going to be, oh, it's going to be so fantastic. And then they're going to go out there and go, where? What? What am I looking at? That little fuzzy ball? You know, remember, anybody remember Pan Stars? Last, you know, it's not, not more than a few months ago, okay? Uh, we actually had like, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 people actually could see it naked eye. Most of them were under the age of 25, and uh, it was only a couple of different nights. But we saw it several times with binoculars and telescopes, which is pretty cool. But that's what the public is expecting. They're expecting that because, not because of us, or any of the local astronomy clubs, anything like that, everybody who probably doesn't know anything about astronomy or is working for Fox News. <laughs> All right? It's got to be, because everything they have thought, everything they say, well, never mind. Everything they say is always great, but uh, they're always, it's always so spectacular. Yes, it's a coronal hole on the sun. Well, it was just the same hole three weeks ago, you know, four weeks ago when it came around the first time. It just wasn't noticed by the people. All right? This is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> New Year's Eve, all right? There's going to be fireworks, thunder, lightning, and comet, okay? And this is Australia, by the way. So you can see all three of them there. That's, I mean, that's right. And plus, you got the city and everything. It's really cool. Wow, you can see it and everything like that. You notice nobody's looking at the comet, they're all looking at the fireworks. And look at the lighting, so why did they bother to set off the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they should just give her a metal pole. <laughs> You know? Uh, technically, it's not. Well, that's what they said it wasn't. So let's go back to this guy. All right, back to a couple of them. This was the last great comet or easily seen comet, Comet Lovejoy. Comet Lovejoy had a slight problem. It basically vaporized as it went around the sun. It's a sun grazer, too. It went around the sun. Beautiful tail, no nucleus. Half, half kilometer nucleus started out basically just disrupted basically went fizzle. And then as it got around the sun, there was nothing left of it. In fact, you can see all those Soho pictures. You see this big bright comet goes around and suddenly nothing comes out the other side. Then a little bit later, you can see this little tail come out following it and that's all that happens with it. So those are some of the pictures that we're gonna have. And so hopefully, again, this time next year, when somebody's gonna come in, we're gonna talk about 
Comet Ison, the great comet, will have pictures and everything like that, right? Right? Ural's going to have pictures. You're going to have pictures. Everybody's going to have pictures, right? Okay, good, good. So next year I won't talk about comets. Oh yeah, they'll be talking about the one that's going to hit Mars at that point. We may know. Okay. And then the last of, oops, sorry. Or we could even have something like this. Now they don't think it's going to look like Comet Holmes, but did anybody go out and see Comet Holmes in October of 19, what is it, 89, Halloween? That was great. I have pictures. Or 2000. 2009, whatever it was, you know, whenever. <laughs> One of those years. It's my last name. Come on. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Common Homes. Yes, it looked like that, 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 and then it actually got up that big. We were showing it to kids going by getting trick or treat. You know, they had the telescope out there and they're looking at it and go, see it right there? And they go, what's that? And I show them in the telescope, okay? Again, those are some good ones. We're not going to talk about Cohotech. We're not going to talk about some of the other ones, the line, a bunch of all the other. Ones that, that fizzled or died or everything, it's kind of like everybody's whining and crying about Pluto not being a planet, okay? Well, what they didn't remember, they don't pay attention to, is that four other planets, or four other objects, five other objects, got promoted to dwarf planet status. So everybody's whining about Pluto losing its status, but they didn't talk about the five that got to promotion, so. All right. We'll stop with this joke here. Okay before we move on. All right, now, we've talked about, we've seen some pictures of what we're hoping it's gonna be and stuff along those lines, all right? Now there is, I'm gonna to switch to a website here real quick. This is, as I have found, all right, no, excuse me while I set this up. Fortunately, it doesn't look the same on my laptop as it does when I plug it in here. But Comet Ison, NASA's Comet Ison is observing campaign. All right, it's isoncampaign.nasa.jpl.something uh, or other, okay, <laughs> or nasa.gov. But basically, it comes in here and it starts with it. It tells you all about it. This is one of the guys on it. It was a group. NASA invited a whole bunch of astronomers, astrophysicists, uh, of a wide variety of people for a two- or three-day conference here at Johns Hopkins University back the 1st of August. Um, I don't think I'm see the guy that was here. One of them, somebody bumped them to me over the weekend was actually there and was talking about it. He was one of the astronomy club members who showed up. But it talks about it. So you want to go here. It's on the, was the website on the blurb in the online? Don't know? Okay, well, if not, I'll leave it here for you to find it, write it down. Okay, and they have, they talk about the different things. I'm just gonna quickly go through most of this just to show you some of the stuff. So that's a humble picture of the comet. Okay, there's the people who discovered it. They've got, look at that big fancy observatory they have. You notice it's a container crate. <laughs> All right. It's a metal container crate, a metal container crate. And there's their telescope. It probably has a top that, that lifts up. I don't, hopefully they got something lifted up because they use the metal container. It's got to be heavy. But these are the two Russian guys. And we'll see more about them when I show you the, I got a couple of short video clips here. All right. There's a comet going into the sun never to come back. Where did it come from? Uh, this is, they're talking about some of the other ones. They think that the great comet of 1680 was related to it. Yes, it's related to it because they both are going near the sun. They both are going very near the sun. Very, very, very close to like what? Was it one million kilometers? Okay. Basically, it's like compared to the Earth, it's like flying below the uh, space shuttle. I mean, not space shuttle, the International Space Station. Okay. Would be, would be a good reference for it. Uh, they said visible dawn over the city. Of course, those people thought, you know, the end of the world was coming. The king, they have to get a new king, a new emperor. A uh, good time not to buy life insurance. I'm not sure which, okay. Right. But those are our guys. Then we're going to jump over to this guy. Ah, yes, there's Comet hale the last great comet that we know of, if you want to call it that. Comet hale was about uh, 10 kilometers across. It was, they, they're suspecting it's about four to five times bigger than uh, Comet Ison. And uh, it was 110 million miles away when it was doing all that stuff. This one's going to be a lot closer. At the top, you can see some uh, uh, observations. So it's following the predicted path. The gray areas are where it's going to be too close to the sun to see. So it's going to be partially there. This is all July. It's now coming back out here in, in September and October. So they'll start going up in here. Uh, it's going to be around, uh, around New Year's. It's going to be close to the sun. So again, hopefully you'll be able to go out there and see it. Again, I'm not going to go through all the information that's there. You guys can see it. Go look at it yourself. 
okay? Uh, Yayoko Siyaki, whatever, okay? The comet of the century. Of course, that was last century, okay? Uh, and then they're talking about this crust family, and then they go, oh, by the way, in 2014, there might be another one. It won't be as bright to our sky, but it'll be very bright to the Martian sky, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, they are also at this, this, the NASA website, asking for people to help out with the observing. They're going to have every 14 or 15, I forget how many spacecraft they're going to have, ex exploring this thing, all right? They're going to have everything they can get from with all the sun watching stuff to go. You can, they can click on the links and stuff, all the sun watching stuff, all the major observatories, basically everybody that's got a camera and the telescopes will be looking at. But we all know that when it comes to the major observatories like Hubble and all the other stuff, Keck and, and the binocular guys and everybody at Chile and Sierra Leone and all those other places, they've got to look at everything else too. It's going to be the amateurs like yourselves, either visually or photographically or you know, electronically, who are going to make the most of the important observations on it. Because you can go out and watch it for five or six hours. Or you can go out and watch it for 10 days in a row, whatever it is. They won't, they only have time. In fact, when they talk about it, they, they, they got four dates. One, one uh, satellite's gonna be able to look at it. Four different dates. And two of them, one of them's already passed. And the other one's the end of September, okay? So they're not going to be able to. So they're asking for your help, and that's also going to be something that you can do. You all know that if you go out, anybody ever go out and put their telescope in the front yard and were amazed at how many people stopped? Stop and say, what are you doing? What are you looking at? You know? Well, I'm looking at the sun. Or I'm looking at the moon. Or, well, look, see, there's Jupiter over there or something like that. You just put it out there. Uh, we're working with the uh, Carroll County Libraries, the library branches, to do a program. Their biggest complaint is it's up in the morning. Well, we don't open until 9 o'clock. <laughs> I said, so? What's that got to do with anything? You know, celestial mechanics wait for no man, all right, or no business. So we've got permission now to be on their properties at 4 a.m. or 4.30 a.m. to do the programs. So we're working with them in advance to get the programs up and running so that the public who does decide to come out, and I have went out there one time, and I did set up for one morning for uh, something else, a conjunction of the planets, and had about 50 people who were driving by at, four, at 5.30 in the morning wondering what I was doing out there with my telescope who stopped long enough on their way to work or to get their latte or whatever they were doing to find out what was going on and stop and see that, you know, point out what we were doing. All right, this is called the ISON Atlas. If you want to know when and where to look, isonatlas.wordpress.com. You can get a link from the other place that comes into it, all right? And you can click on August, September, October, November, December, uh, again, these are done, he'll tell you about it, and this is not what the tail is going to look like. It's just to try to give you an indication of which direction the tail is going to be pointing when you're looking at the variety of, of the things. Yes, we'd love for it to come out that morning to be this, you know, stretching from Pegasus down here to Lepus, you know, 40 degrees or 30 degrees across the sky. Oh, please, 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 please. All right. But probably not, probably not. And uh, you can again scroll down through it and uh, it talks about the different things. But here, what I also did is I put up some charts here of where it's going to be in September, all right? And being that we're in September now, there it is through the beehive. Talks about it, the beehive and Mars, everything like that. But yeah, uh, you'll be able to enjoy the view, but you will not see it with there. Keep going, Mars and Comet Ison, so you get a little better view of it. And if you go into uh, Astronomy Magazine, September and October issues, uh, September they basically parallel, and October they change positions. So these are very good maps to see. It, at this point in October, it should be visible. If you can find Mars, and in fact, on the 16th and the 21st, they're almost next to each other. It's closer in the sky they're going to get in that relation, because later on one passes the other one by. But you can look at it and you can see that. You know, now it's inside of there. So get out and try to look at it. And uh, is it, was the clear sky clock tomorrow morning going to be clear at 5 o'clock? No? I didn't think so. Okay. Actually, I don't think it's going to be clear until Monday evening. All right. Oops. So again, you can do that. Then October, here it is in October. Mars and Ison and the moon come up. There's some good groupings if you're going to do any photography 
the moon, the beehive, things along those lines are all in that area and that's uh, probably the second or third of October. You see all of them in that area. Now there's a little bit of tail, it should be a visible tail at that point. In binoculars, maybe small telescopes, let's hope. Mars and the moon should make a nice, nice pairing for all you people who like to take photographs or do quick sketching for an hour and a half. All right. And then the last one is, ah, what's Earth sky? Why do, why do I have her in here? Okay, this is some pictures. You can go there, live up to expectations, month by month. Oh, this is where I got those charts from, yep. Um, again, this is back in September of 2012, but you can all run the little thing where it comes in, comes in and come in past there, past Earth, past Mars, whip around the sun and then whip back out. Uh, anybody, if you're a teacher, this is a good time to teach your, if you have math or astronomy or physics students, now this is a good time to teach them about ellipses, ellipses, and uh, why, you know, it, it covers certain, certain areas in a certain same amount of time, you know, why is it going to go from here to here in this amount of time, but go from here to here in this amount of time, okay? So even my fifth grade students are learning about the, site in the, the math, and we actually use space math dot com as a, a good thing to do, okay? So that's basically all of that portion, all right? Oh, we're back to the tractor beam. All right, I'm going to leave that one here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little, tell me when you see what's there, raise your hand, okay? Stars? I didn't see anybody raise their hand, so nobody, nobody gets surprised if you just call it out, sorry. That's why my students, you don't have to raise their hand and then see it. Horseshoes. Horseshoes. Dark Nebula. I don't know. I can actually see it on here, but I don't know if I can see it up there. But we'll leave it up there while we're talking. Okay. All right. Now, when you're doing the outreach to the public, okay, the coolest thing about outreach to the public is you get to make a comment. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a comment. Y'all know there are, that Chicken Little was right, right? You know Chicken Little was right? You know who Chicken Little is? You sure you know who Chicken Little was? <laughs> All right. Chicken Little was right. The sky is falling. One of the things that we'll notice from the comets, and we'll talk about a little bit later, is that Comet Ison has a chance of producing a meteor shower. It, and we'll talk about it in more detail, but it has a chance of we're actually going through a meteor, through the tail of the meteor, or the shower as it goes by. This is an actual meteor. Okay. All right. It has a chance of going through the tail, and we're going to see we have a choice of having a meteor shower on both sides of the planet. We'll go into that in more detail. But we can do that, and that's really cool because most of the meteor showers in the world, or not in the world, but in our solar system that we see are coming, over, coming from comets, leftover comets, 42 out of 44. And they technically think the, the other two, the, the two that are from asteroids, because the asteroids themselves are falling comet-like orbits, that they're just to burn out remnants. And we're still passing through the tails of them and stuff along those lines. So, uh, as if, who was here last year? All right, so you remember the great failure of 2012, right? Okay, okay. All right, so we're going to see if we can, as last year, because unfortunately my dry eyes got wet, uh, I told them that uh, we're going to do a thing called research. The definition of research is if we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be called research, okay? And that failure is just an unplanned result. So last year we did a lot of research with unplanned results. This year we're going to do a lot of research with hopefully planned results. So we're going to find out here in a second. Now, comets have thousands and thousands and thousands of ingredients. Uh, but before I make a mess, I've got to get prepared here. So I've got to put on my apron, right? If you're going to cook up something, you've got to put on an apron, right? Like that? And I do have, I, do, I will need an assistant here later, okay? I will need an assistant. Anybody want to raise their hand to be an assistant? I don't see any hands up there. All right, we have an assistant. Come on up here. Come on up here. Yes, young lady. And you get your own apron because I don't want you to get dirty either. Okay? So here you go. Put this on over your head. All right, turn around here. We'll tie this. Tie this in the back. Oh, man, this thing's... Is this going to be too big for you? Huh? Nope? Okay, all right. Well, hopefully it won't. If it is, live with it. All right, all right, so you're my assistant, okay? So when I ask you to do something, you, you'll, you'll say, okay, I'll do it, right? And you'll also answer the questions, right? 
right? All right. Well, I'm going to ask. We'll, let's, let's, we'll practice here. We'll practice first. You ready? All right. These are, I'm going to start out with the simple questions first. Right. See, you've got to know the answers, because that way when the guy over there goes, says, says the answer, if he's wrong, you can say, no, that's not the right answer, and he doesn't get the prize, because you're going to hand out the prizes, too. Okay? All right. So the first thing you're going to do, first question we're going to ask him, we're going to start with the easy ones. You ready? Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. What's the speed of light to six decimal places? <laughs> What? That's an easy question. No? You don't know? Oh. Uh, uh, he's, he's Googling it back there. He's going. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll start with the harder one then, okay? All right, you ready? What's my name? Joe. <laughs> Boy, oh boy. Yes, sir. Turkey vulture? <laughs> Sam. I got the vulture part, but turkey, no, it doesn't match. No, no, no. Kangaroo vulture might work. Okay. Kangaroo vulture might be close. You know what? My well, I even told you what my name was when I was sitting in here. Right here. In case anybody else. It's Fred. Oh, Hold on. Fred Whipple. Oh, wait, he's here. I can't see that. All right. Well, sorry, let me put this back on here. Okay. All right. All right. We'll start with it. All right. We're going to put a bunch of ingredients now. There are thousands. Anybody figure out what it is yet? If you figure out what it is, raise your hand. Okay. All right. It's, it's an all noise, no signal ratio. Yeah, but what's the ratio? Sorry. Nope, that's not it. Huh? Nope. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it is, it's what it is. It's one of those 3D ones. Okay. I don't know if this is good enough resolution. You, it, later on, I'll turn the laptop around. You can see it. So here, we'll go this way then, since that's not a good one. Okay. We'll go back and we'll leave it on this one. All right. Now, there are hundreds of thousands of chemicals and elements, minerals. I won't say minerals, but hundreds of thousands of elements and combination of molecules in a comet. All right, hundreds of thousands of them. Now, I can put all those, and we're going to make a model. So we can put all those in there, right? We'd be here for her, what? How old are you? I'm turning 10 on the 19th. This month? So your birthday's this month? All right, make sure I give you a special prize for your birthday, okay? All right, all right, all right. All right, so you're turning 10. If we did it, we will, when she's, grad, when she's 65, we'll be done. <laughs> all right, when she's 65, we'll be done. You got time? No. Oh, well, yeah, we don't have enough tape either, so okay. All right, so we can't do that. So I'm going to limit it down to five ingredients, but I'm going to need your help, all right, including anybody over the age of five and under the age of 105, I'm going to need your help because we're going to be scientists, we're going to be observing today. So we're going to put in five ingredients, right? So if I do something strange and I want you to raise your hand and say, Mr. Bird, Mr. Bird, all right, if I say something wrong, you know, like totally wrong, and if, by the way, if you're, if you're an astrophysicist or an astronomer and I say something very long, just ignore it. If we're here for entertainment purposes. All right. So I'm going to say something like, we're going to put in, f or my apron is white and hers is blue. Um, you're going to go, ah, Mr. Bird, Mr. Bird. Um, you're technically yours. Blue. Mine's blue and hers is what? White. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Now I had something here, had some giveaways to give away, but... What did I do with him? Ah, here they are. All right. So he gets the first prize. So run him over there and give him this little sun thing, okay? All right. Run that over to him. All right. So you get the first prize. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do stuff along those lines. So we're going to put in five ingredients in this common. Five ingredients. And we're not got all day to put hundreds of thousands, but we only got time to put in five. And by the way, you can win these too, by the way. Are you paying attention? You can win prizes too, okay? All right. Y'all ready? Five ingredients. Five. 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 Y'all ready? Like this. What does that mean? You're doing seven. Seven? Seven fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. I do have, why do I have seven fingers up there? Go ahead. Take a prize. Take a prize. All right. Take one of those. Yep. Seven fingers. All right. Whose turn is it? It's your turn. Okay. What are you guys doing? I know you're excited because there's people, but it's not your turn. You return later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My dad said you can always talk to yourself. Just don't lose the argument. 
All right? So we're going to put five ingredients in a comet. See, she's paying attention. We're going to put five ingredients in a comet. Okay, the first ingredient in a comet is a thing called rock. Let's all say that. Rock. 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 No, Gornak's not here anymore. All right, rock. It's not the rock monster anymore, it's just a rock. Now this may look like sand, okay? May sound like sand, but it's not sand, it's rock. If you ever take, I, by the way, I have a digital microscope out there, sorry, commercial for hands-on optics. We have digital microscopes out there. You can look at this and you'll find out that sand is actually. Can, can, can I have the pet rock you were passing around? No, you cannot. <laughs> and I did not call it a pet rock. Uh, all right. But sand technically is rock, and I can't call it dirt because dirt, dirt's got organic matter in it, you know, like plants, animals, people, other things along those lines, so we can't do it. So we're going to put the rock in there. That rock is what gives us all those shooting stars, all those, not all those shooting stars, but all the meteor showers we have. If you check, most of them are following comet paths. They're all from comets. What happens as our little comet evaporates as it gets closer to the sun, it leaves this little trail of sand, okay? All right? And leaves a little trail of sand. Here, won't you? Here, hold out your hand. All right, I want you to walk around and show everybody that. Okay? All right? All those little particles. When you look up inside and you see that little streak going across the sky, that piece of sand or that rock made it. It wasn't much. Make sure, now, you have to go in the back row, too, because those people back there are older and they can't see as well. Okay? Okay? All right. Yes, they, 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 need, they need assistance. Come on in, young lady. Come on, come on. You can come in. All right. All right. So, yeah, when that rock hits the atmosphere at 70 miles a second or 50 miles a second, boom, it turns into plasma and we see that streak. And if you don't believe me, take your hands and put them together like this. Put them together like this. There we go. Now, rub them. Press harder. Rub faster. Ow, are they getting hot? Yeah. Now smell them. Smell that? That's burnt flesh. <laughs> all right? All the dead cells in your hand, just you, they, you can get it hot enough to burn them. So, all right? So that's the, uh, there you go. All right. So now, the next most plentiful chemical. Are you done? Put that in there. We don't want it to escape. All right? You sure? Are you saving? I bet you saved some. Uh, she's trying to sneak out with some of my rock. She's trying to get out here with some of my rock. Okay. The second most plentiful comet or chemical in a comet is not ammonia. It's all right. It's methane. You guys know what methane is? I do. What is it? The way I, I define it is fart gas. Fart gas. Well, okay, that's not quite the way I I would go a little more scientific, like beans, beans, the musical fruit, the more you eat, the more you make. Methane. All right? So methane. Of course, if this is methane. This, if, this, if this was methane, of course, methane in this atmospheric pressure and temperature is a gas. Unless you're on Titan, then it's a liquid. Uh, and we have lakes and stuff. We'll talk about that later. But uh, we'd open this up and y'all go, oh, what's that smell? You smell anything? He's going over there with his electronic flash. He's going to press it. It's going to create a spark. It's going to blow up, burn the place down. And they'll get all pissed off and never invite me back. So can't do that. So I'm going, okay, I can't use methane. What's the next most plentiful chemical So I'm going down the list. <gasps> hydrogen cyanide. <laughs> all right, I'm going hydrogen cyanide. Cool, cool. And I go, wait, wait, hydrogen cyanide, what's that? What's that? Hyd I remember hydrogen. That's that thing that was in that big dirigible called the Hindenburg that blew up and burned up and killed a whole bunch of people. Ah, that can't be good. Then I said, cyanide, cyanide. <gasps> I saw that the other day in a movie. They gave it to somebody to try and kill them. I go, well, well, I'm trying to kill them. Hydrogen, cyanide, hydrogen, so those two together can't be very good. So again, we'd open this up, we'd all go, what's that smell? We'd all die to come in with the hazmat team, clean up everything, and they'd be all pissed off, and, uh, and Novak and TMI would never invite me back. So we can't use that either. So I'm going down this. <gasps> ah, you know what the third most plentiful chemical in the comet is? Ammonia. Ammonia, all right, it's ammonia. Yes, 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 yes. Now, as a scientist, you've got to be careful. All right, you got to follow instructions, right? Right. What do you want to be when you grow up? Astronomer. Astronomer. Oh, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> All right. Because can you? You want to be an astronomer? I'm going to be a mechanical engineer, so I got a hammer. <laughs> I can do things with my hammer. I can touch it. I can see it. I can play with it. Right? Can you go touch a star? Can you touch another galaxy, a nebula, anything like that? No. So all you get is light, isn't it? I have another program called Light. It's all astronomers get. Okay? You like those commercials? All right. We'll bring out the magic camera later. 
along with the magic spoons. Are you ready? You sure? Are you ready? Pay attention, Ryan. Okay. All right. All right. So, as a scientist, I was running late for a program. I was out of ammonia, and I go, oh, I got to stop and get some ammonia. So I ran to the store, looked down, so I grabbed some ammonia, and ran out. Okay. Well, it wasn't until later when my comet blew up. It blew up everywhere. Got body pieces. I lost a finger. You know. No, actually, I lost that in the other day when I was sneezed. Okay. Uh, but that I noticed this is all-purpose cleaner with ammonia and lemon scent. So if it starts bubbling and hissing and smoking later on, I'm going out that door. You guys can try and cram your way out that door as best you can. And there's none of this women and children first. Uh-uh. If a bear is after us, a bear comes in here, he's not going to want me because I'm old and stringy. He's going to want you because you're young and tender. And I don't have to outrun the bear. All I got to do is outrun you. Okay? So I'm going to stop and put on my sneakers, you know, so... All right, so we're going to add ammonia. Don't worry, we'll trip in. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I was going to say, he still won't want me. All right, now, this is the part. Anybody ever put their hand on a hot stove and burn themselves or do something that hurt? And they don't, do you, how easy is it to do that again? It's next to impossible. Even though I know the stove is off, to go over there and go, is it on? <laughs> no. So I have, this is where you got to help. I can't, because I, I, it blew up the last time. <laughs> I can't do it. So, will you pour about uh, two capfuls of ammonia in there, please? Go ahead. Just it doesn't blow up every time, but it blows up enough. I'm, go ahead. You don't need a cap. A capful is about that much. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Go ahead. Go on. What's the capful again? Uh, a smidgen. I'll tell you when. Too much. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Dump it in there. Dump it in. Ah! Too much. Okay, did it blow up? Is it bubbling? Is it hissing? Oh, it's bubbling. Uh-oh. Okay, all right. It doesn't blow up till later anyways. <laughs> all right, so that's the second ingredient. Now, the third ingredient in a comet, the third ingredient in a comet is polyaromatic hydrocarbons, Okay polyaromatic hydrocarbons, the third ingredient in a comet, okay? The third ingredient in a comet. Yes, sir. Follow up two fingers in each hand. That's four. Uh, that's five. five. All right. All right, so three and two. How many did I say? Three? No, how many ingredients that were, were the third? Which, which ingredient are we putting in now? The third one? Oh, I like that one better. The third one. Okay. The third one. <laughs> Wait, I still have too many, don't I? Which one? <laughs> Whose turn is it? I'm so confused. All right. Whose turn? No, I know it's not your turn. You guys said, it's your turn, right? Okay. So why, why are you guys saying, I don't care if they're not paying attention. It's not your turn. Here you go. Hey, guys, wake up. All right. All right. So there. I like that. There's three ingredients. All right. Give him another prize. Here you go. Here. Give him a prize. All right. Even though you can't count to five, he did get a prize for casting. I had more than three fingers up. All right, so there's the third ingredient in the comet. The third ingredient in the comet is a thing called polyaromatic aromic hydrocarbons. Pause. I keep getting tired of saying polyaromatic hydrocarbons. Or polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, whatever it is, you know, something along those lines. So I just say, you know, I'm just going to say pause. Right? Now, they're found in, out in space, they're found in gas, clouds, they're found in planets, they're found in everything living. Every single thing we've ever found, we've always found these guys in them. All right, so I said, oh, that's cool. So they could be a basis of life. We don't know anything like that. But we look for that when we're looking at for planets around other stars, okay? Now, I can't go out in space and get some pause. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. So I'm just going to say pause. Can you say pause? pause. Can you say poly polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons? No? How about you? Polycyclic. Aromatic hydrocarbons. Good, 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 good. English is his first language. That's good. That's good. I like that. I like that. Okay. Now, I can't go out in space and get this, so I'm going, if I can't go out in space, okay, if I could, this would be worth tens of millions of dollars, and I wouldn't waste it to make any comment. Actually, I would. I'd sell half of it, get five or six million dollars, and waste the other half because I can't. All right. How much money you need? Yeah, how much money you need? You know, five, ten million, that's what you, you know. Some people just got to have it all. All right, so I figure, well, if it's found in everything alive, it's probably still in everything that's dead. 
So what I do is I walk around the room here. I look for dead bugs, flies, anything like that, okay? I grab them, throw them all in a blender. If I'm really lucky, I'll find some stink bugs. I know they gotta have polyaromatic hydrocarbons in them, because they're very aromatic, you know? So, so I throw them all in, and if I'm really, really, really lucky, I'll find a mouse in a mousetrap. Throw it all in the blender, add a little water, blend it all up, run it through a coffee filter to get the mouse brains out, and I got polyaromatic hydrocarbons, okay? Now, for this experiment to work, for the comet to hold together correctly, this has got to be the right consistency, all right? This is where I need your help, all right? Because there's only one way to test the right consistency of this. Come over here, come around here, come around on this side, okay? All right, stick your finger out, stick your finger out, just like that, okay? Now, turn it over this way. All right, now I'm going to pour that in there, and what you're going to have to do, I'll show you what you got to do, okay? You got to reach over there like that, grab a piece of it, and go out. <laughs> and taste it. And tell me if it's sticky enough, okay? It's, by the way, it's not syrup either. It is mouse brains. <laughs> well, are you going to stick your finger around there or not? Uh, I would. I would. What kind of scientist are you? Well, I'm an astronomer. I don't have to taste anything. <laughs> yeah, you haven't taken my chemistry course yet. All right. All right. All right. I won't let you have to taste it. Besides, I made sure I didn't get the green stuff either. All right. Somebody says, ah, that's syrup. No, it ain't syrup. It might be motor oil, but it's not syrup. All right. So that's the third ingredient in the comet. Thank you. Thank you for your not helping. All right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So that's the third ingredient. Now, the fourth ingredient in the comet is the thing that made it work last year, didn't make, or didn't make it work last year, will make it work this year. It's styrofoam. No. No? Oh, okay. Huh? Could be. All right. Yes. It's a thing called frozen carbon dioxide. All right. Now, we're going to, everybody keeps yelling dry ice. By the way, dry ice is not the correct answer. All right. Because here is a, a chunk of Frozen carbon dioxide. Oh, that's a little too big. I mean, ooh, that's cold. That's cold. Don't try this at home, by the way. All right. Can you eat it? Sure, go right ahead. Is your dad here? Yeah. <laughs> I saw that look. I saw that look. <laughs> Did that answer your question? You know, sometimes I just amaze myself that some kids will say, Can I have some? All right. Notice I'm not holding on to this. You want to hold on to it? No, you don't. All right? The reason I'm not holding on to it is because it's 107 degrees below zero. And my hand is 98 degrees above zero. How big a difference is that? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on, kids. Come on. It's for a prize. Hurry up. I know it requires math. It's hot. No, I want numbers. Shh, shh. It's really... No, 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 no. 268. 268. No! Oh, so close. Does anybody need a calculator? Is that what you guys need? Yes. 270. 270. Oh, you got the numbers correct. You just don't got them in the right order. Yes. 702. Whoa. <laughs> All right, we're going to add 98 to 107. It actually comes out to be 205. All right, it's close enough. All right, so 205 degrees different. If anybody, like I have, and unfortunately I have one of those kids who, yeah, is this thing hot? <laughs> Touched it. Well, your finger is about, uh, that stove top's about 300 degrees, your finger's about 100 degrees. That's about a 200 degree difference. What happens there is the heat turns all the water in your hand, all the molecules in your hand, all the cells, into steam. And you can see it, see it coming off of, off the, off of that right now? Okay. Ow. It right, turns it into steam. That's not steam, by the way. That's water vapor. It turns it into steam, and steam is bigger as a gas than a liquid. So all the cells in your hand rupture, and you get a blister. And all the nerve cells go, ow, that hurt. All right? Well, if I was to do the same thing here, I'd hold on to it. This being 107 degrees below zero, and we all know that water freezes at what? 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, you want is his dad here? <laughs> I want to work on his science. Okay. Oh. What time? What temperature does it freeze at? Yeah, that's it. That's the correct answer. All right. There we go. Here, give her one of these. All right. Here you go. You get the right answer. You got the right answer. You get one. Yeah, I'm supposed to give it to 
Oh, well, I'm sorry. Oh. 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 <laughs> She's going to make a good wife someday. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, actually, it's zero degrees Celsius at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But the fact is that it's 200 degrees colder than my hand will cause it to do the same thing. The ice, the water in the molecules or the cells in my hand will freeze. And as we know, when water goes from a liquid to a solid, it gets bigger. It's really unusual. It goes from a liquid to a solid, it gets bigger. Or it goes from a liquid to a gas, it gets bigger. Not too many other chemicals or molecules actually do that. Okay? So it's going to get bigger and it's going to rupture the cells and it's going to end up with a blister and all the little nerve cells are going to go, ow! Right? You want to try it? Anybody ever seen the movie Christmas Story? Yeah. Where he goes up and sticks his tongue to the pole? That was probably about zero degrees. This will hurt a whole lot more. Okay? All right. Now, uh-oh. Okay, I want to make sure it's still there. All right. Now, if I were to take a regular ice cube, which I don't have, and lay it down on the ground, when it melted, what would we have? Yes? Water. No, we have water even though it's not... We have frozen water when it's an ice cube. We all have, still be, it'll still be water when it's melted, and it will still be water when it's a gas. But what is it when it's melted? What state of matter? Come on. Huh? Liquid. Give him a prize. All right, right there. Give him one of those. Okay. A liquid. It's going to be a liquid. So when an ice cube, a water, a H2O molecule melts, it turns into a liquid. Well, the Frozen carbon dioxide, when it melts, look there. What do you see? You see anything there? No. You don't see anything there. It goes straight to a gas. It's called sublimation. Let's all say sublimation. Sublimation. You didn't say anything. Sublimation. No, this young lady next to you. Oh, okay. Make the lips move a little bit more so I can see them next time then. Okay. All right. It's like sublimation. That sublimation, okay, and when it goes directly from a solid to a gas. That's why they call it dry ice. It does not leave any a puddle behind. Very good. Give that lady there a prize, too, all right? Here you go. She can have one of these. Give her one of those, okay? All right. All right. So, yes, it doesn't leave a puddle behind. So we're going to put that next ingredient in there. And lucky for me, we do have that next ingredient. All right. Yay. All right. You want to do this? Can I do it? There's not a good chance that they're going to make it to 21. <laughs> I wouldn't bother with, well, actually, I might do with life insurance now. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Oh, cold. I'm supposed to have my protective glove on, but I forgot to put it on, so. Uh oh. Bear food. There we go. All right. Ah, let's, let's make a nice little in there. Whew, cold. All right, let's see here. In the meantime, we got, we got time. I can take another hour and a half to talk, so I'll actually drop this in here, and you guys can watch it bubble for a little bit. All right. While we're doing that, but before we go anywhere, actually, we'll finish up before we do that. All right. We're going to mix our ear. Shake this up. Uh, I forgot something in the car. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. So does it look like a dirty snowball? Does it look like a comet? No. Uh-oh. See, see it? Does it look like one? Does it sound like one? Does it look like a dirty comet, dirty snowball to you? No, it doesn't look like a snowball. A snowball should be like round and, right? It doesn't smell too good. Either. Doesn't smell too good. Uh oh. Uh oh. Are we having a? Are we having an unplanned result? Why? Why? Because that means I've. How many ingredients did I say we're going to put in? How many have I put in? Four. Four. I give that man a prize. All right. That's why our experiment didn't work because we didn't finish putting all the ingredients in there. Good job. Good job. Okay. Now, the next chemical that we're going to put in is the most dangerous chemical of them all, okay? All right, it's, it's, it's so destructive, it breaks down about every kind of bond there is. It is so powerful that it destroys entire continents. Too much of it, you die. 
Too little of it, you die. And it's superheated form, it'll melt the flesh off your bones. So in case you need any zombie thingies. All right? And that chemical is called dihydrogen monoxide. Now, dihydrogen monoxide goes, uh oh, there's one of those big words he's using again. So let's take a look at it. dihydrogen. Di means two, not hey, I'm dying. All right? Two hydrogens. Mono means one. It means monoxide, so that means one oxygen. So what has two hydrogens and one oxygen? You gotta be under 16. Come on, hurry up. Five, four, yes. Water, yay, H2O. All right, here. Yeah, here, we'll give you another prize here, right? Here you go, you get a cat's eye nebula poster. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so yes, H2O. It's the most dangerous chemical of them all. So, and by the way, this is, notice the little line on the inside? See that little line across there? All right, that's the calibrated to be 237.5 milliliters of water. Any more, any less, this thing blows up. <laughs> all right? Of course, I can't see anything because of all the smoke, so I'm just guessing. <laughs> oh, good. Is that too much? Nah, not enough. <laughs> all right? Oh no, I got too much! <laughs> All right, now, we're, since we, we're gonna pretend we're gonna be gravity, what we're gonna do is go pick this ball up and shake it around. Now, I do this program all the time, and occasionally I forget what I'm doing. Um, if you well, boom! <laughs> what? What? Is it? Promise? <laughs> That's, I told you that's why I missed a finger. Here, you hold it. Where are you going? Come here, hold this, hold this. Let me spin it around a little bit. Oh, man, look at it. She's running away. Of course, these kids go, yeah, yeah, let me hold it, let me hold it, Dad. I really, you, I wouldn't borrow with the insurance. I worry about what doing. College funds, they ain't going to make it, man. Spend it down. All right. Uh-oh. Did I say, what did I say about hissing and... Can you hear anything? No. Oh, good. I can hear it. I can hear it. Can you hear it? Oops. Sorry. <laughs> you didn't see that. All right, let me clip back on here. That's why. Ha, okay. All right, so we're going to do our gravity thing here. We're going to squeeze it out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh, it's foaming on, run! Run! I told you, see, you gotta be a scientist. Don't get ammonia with lemon scent and cleaner, okay? With lemon scent. Because it does really strange, bizarre things. They're not supposed to bubble up like this, okay? All right? They're not supposed to do this. All right. Go ahead, reach in there, grab it. Grab ah. it. <laughs> grab it, go ahead. Grab it, grab it, grab it. All right, now, you know, oh, hold on, hold on. I've all, over the years, I've done this a lot of times, but over the years, you know, I've lost a lot of things. I mean, I can't tell you all the things I've lost. Toys, car keys, homework, homework. I even lost my kids, okay? But they managed to find their way back every time. Next year, though, we're going to Grand Canyon. So we'll see, all right? But I didn't even lost my first wife, but that's a whole different story. All right? All right. That, but you know, of all the things that I lost, you know what I missed the most? My mind. All right? Lucky I have a spare one here. Okay? That's supposed to be a joke. Y'all supposed to laugh. Har, har, har. Okay, okay. okay. There we go. All right. Out. There's my comment. Let me get rid of all the fuzz. Oh, listen to it. Listen to it. It's going to blow up. Hear it? Hear it? Hissing. I told you. Oh, what did I say about hissing and bubbling and spewing? It's not spewing. It's not spewing. Here, hold this a second. Hold this a second. <laughs> Don't drop it. It will blow up. Okay, you got it? You got it? Drop it. i got to take this outside and dump it real quick. Drop it. Drop it. I want to clear the way. Move the kids out of the way. Women and children first. I'm glad you didn't listen to them. You will become a good astronomer someday. Don't listen to your peers. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Go with your theory. It works. Bazinga. All right. 
This is a comet Christmas tree. Notice the little Christmas tree shape? All right. This could be a comet. This could be a small comet in the sky. There's no size limits on comets. Actually, there might be an upper size limit, but we don't. You want to touch it? Go right ahead. Dad, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> you guys are really trying to hurt yourselves, aren't you? Okay. Right, sit back now. I don't know. I got the glove underneath it. Was I touching it with my thumb? Ah! All right, go ahead. You can touch it. Time's up. Oh, too late. Too late. Too late. Okay, you got it. You got it. Oh, you missed it. Got it. Here. Hand me that little piece right there. Thank you. Oh, it dropped. Okay, it fell out of the sky. Okay, all right, all right, all right. We won't have to take him out later and kill him then. Okay, all right. All right, so here, hold this very carefully like this and walk around so everybody can see it, okay? All right. And by the way, the hair, if we ever find a hair on a comet, you can't touch it anymore. If you find a hair on the comet, that's going to answer a whole lot of questions. Basically, we did some really poor uh, sterilization when we caught it, All right. when we found it. All right. Now, oh, did I miss, did we, do, did we do the magic hammer? No. Or the magic spoons? No. All right. Well, I'm going to need another volunteer for the magic spoon one. Maybe. Let's see. Uh, it's got to be somebody that's agile. Somebody that can stand on their head oh, I can do that. without falling over. Okay, you didn't come on up here, young man. Come on. Okay. All right, all right. Turn around. Face, stand here. Face the crowd. Face the crowd. Okay. Now, this is my magic spoon. Look at that spoon. Does it look magic to you? No. Yes. Very magic. No. Does it sound magic? Yeah. Does it look magic to you? Not really, no. No? Look magic no. to you? No. No. There. Now, does it look magic? Okay. No. All right. It's magic because you, you can stand on your head? Yes. All right. Should I have him try? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Try. Stand on your head. All right. I'll do it. All right. Uh, no, no. Time's up. Time's up. This is a magic spoon because I can make him stand on his head. Now, are you, are you right side up or upside down? Right side up. All right. You ready? Abracadabra. Magic presto. Are you upside down or right side up? Upside down. Look at that. I got him standing on his head and didn't have to make him move. Oh, thank you for the gift. Thank you. Where'd you find this? This is like a comet. Did you make this? Yes. <laughs> I did. I did. I gave it to her. You're not done yet. You're not done yet. Get back up here. All right. Now, did I touch him in any way? All right. Which way are you? Right side up or upside down? Right side up. You ready? <laughs> upside down or right side up? Upside down. Did I touch him in any way? No. Is this the same spoon I had the whole time? See, told you it's a magic spoon, all right? Now, if you'd like to, you can pass this around. Let, just pass it to that guy. Okay, thank you, sir, for having a seat. Here you go. You get a poster for being such an amazing volunteer and not getting hurt. All right? All right. All right. Everybody can take a look at their map. Did you do that? All you have to do is flip it to make it. All right? That's the magic spoon. Now, that's everybody says, oh, yeah, all you got to do is turn it around, stuff like that. No, I guarantee some of you people haven't stood on your head in a long time, okay? All right? Now this one, this is even more fun. This, these are singing magic spoons here. Hello, how are you? I can sing. Hello, right? No, it doesn't work. Okay, all right. I'm gonna take my chunk of frozen carbon dioxide, stick it into one spoon, take the other spoon, and put it on top. You have to be quiet. Here we go. <laughs> They sound like they're being tortured. <laughs> all right. All right. So that's the magic spoons. Notice I got them to sing. Now we're going to try one other thing here. We're going to try the magic hammer. Oh, no, I don't hear the hammer. All right. The hammer. Plastic tables don't work well. I need wooden tables for a hammer. Here, I'm going to use your head. Let me use your head. Use mine. What? You're my helper. You said you'd volunteer. Bye. Here we go. We'll put it on here. Oop. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Beans last night. Okay. All right. All right. So, see, I can make them make them make noise, right? Magic, right? Can you make them make noise? Go ahead, go ahead. Here, here you go. Make a make noise. 
Go ahead, put them together, make noise. Get the ice. So, you said you could do it. You don't get the ice. <laughs> See, you've got to specify your questions. All right. All right, yeah, those are the magic ones, and we won't go into the physics of why they work and stuff like that, but they do. Right. If you happen to notice, though, notice our little comet here is outgassing. Notice you're getting the little, the little trail behind it and stuff as we go through, as we get closer to the sun, okay? As we get closer and closer and closer to the sun. All right. All right. We actually said it there. That's what happens when a comet gets close to the sun. It starts outgassing. It starts sublimating. In fact, it's got a little geyser sticking up. That spews all that dust and gas into the atmosphere, or actually into space. The sun ionizes that gas and that, that dust, reflects off the dust. We see that. It ionizes the gas. They reflect. They glow. And that gives us... This man was up too late last night. Sorry. I didn't know. I'm not boring you too. So, okay. I understand. All right. So that's where we get all of our comet tails and things along those lines from. All right, here, let's move this. All right, now I'm going to put this back in here. Actually, I'm going to drop it in here. <laughs> oh, that's right. Speaking of that, did this explode? Ah, one way to get Dr. Pepper cold. All right, anybody figure out what this is yet? No. Let's see. No, can't see it here. All right, you'll have to come up and look later. But I gave you a hint. All right, this is the comet path, or comet Ison's path in September. All right? Basically, September 1st, so it's roughly right here. There's cancer right there. Actually, Mars is a little ways behind it right behind it. It's actually out of the picture, but we'll be in this area. Around the 16th to the 21st, Comet Ison and Mars will be exactly close together, okay? And then the 21st, huh? Are you tired already? Are you done? Am I, am I done with my helper? Okay, go ahead. If you want to give up now and don't get all the prizes, you can. <laughs> okay, you sure? You want to stay? Okay, all right, just want to make sure. All right. all right, now I need you to go around and get me some more poly uh, aromatic hydrocarbons, would you? Aromatic. What, what are they made out of? Go around, uh, I see, in fact, I see a couple over there. Okay, all right, then yes, you can go sit down. All right, are you done helping? No, okay, okay, that's getting too boring now, I think is what it is. Right. Can you get that untied? Here, here, hold up, hold on, don't move. Pull this one this way and that one that way, voila. Oh, good, we got a knot. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, take it off. Thank you for your help there, young lady. Give her a big hand. All right, all right, yeah. Well, here you go, since you were such a good helper, you get one of these. Ooh, it's just an empty white envelope. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our path. So we can go out and look at this. Uh, again, I probably should have done this talk on Friday so we could have went out and tried to see it on Friday or Saturday, but we can't. But that's basically what it's going to be. Again, it's going to be very, very, very dim. Very, how many varies did I say? Very, very. Well, let's see. I got three there. I got eight there. I got a hand here. I got three. No, I actually said four. I said it was very, going to be very, very, very dim. How many varies did I say? Four. Four. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See? See? You got to pay attention. We're scientists. We got to be observing at all times, all right? All right. And then almost the last one uh, to finish up and wrap up everything uh, is my favorite Foxtrot cartoon. And that's the way I barbecue. Uh, all right. So. Um, Again, you're going to have a lot of, lot of questions for outreach and things along those lines. You're going to have a lot of uh, uh, people who are going to come up and ask, go and get all weird on you with, uh, uh, is it going to run into the earth? Are we going to be destroyed? Are there aliens flying in behind it? Uh, all that stuff. You can always just refer to this comic to answer that question. Um, do along those lines. So again, there's so much out there, so, so much wrong information that's coming out there, that's, it's incorrect, that people are going to go, well, I heard, you know, and some people are going to be, you know, again, we'll talk about Fox News, 
we're going to talk about them. But uh, they're, all, they're going to be out there trying to hype this all up, which is great. If it turns out to be a spectacular comet, great. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I won the lottery. All right. If it turns out to fizzle, burn and fizzle and sizzle, all right, then it's not going to be good. In fact, here, let me, there, I got the real quick one here. Where is it? All right, last one. Uh, here we go. Let's see, which one is this? Sizzle, fizzle, and burn. Nope. There we go. Ah, yeah, here we go. Ah, here's your choices. The epic fail. Okay. First case is the worst case. It's the epic fail, use the popular. But this means common energy inner solar system and just fails out, burns up, falls apart, disappears. We can't see squat. Okay? It can happen. We don't know. Okay? Uh, unstable, simply vaporizing. I mean, Comet Elon did the same thing, okay? All right. Then it would get, uh, the other one I call is the sizzle and burn. As it approaches the sun, it's going to get really cool. We're going to have all kinds of a tail coming out, which we can't see because it's so close to the sun. It's going to go around behind the, con the sun, and it's not going to come out. It's going it's to go in and disappear and never be seen or heard from again. Okay? And then here's the one that we all hope happens is that we have history in the making, okay? That it becomes a comet of the century, even though it's only 13 years into the century. And hopefully we'll get more comets. You know, it'd be nice to have a comet every 15 or 20 years for every generation, right? Like they did in the old days. Why do we have more comets in the old days? Darker sky. Darker sky, okay. More people were up at sunrise. No TV. No TV, no video games, okay? Mainly, that's a lot of it. Yeah, you went to bed at dark and you got up at dark. You know, so that may have been it. I don't know. We'll have to find out. But basically, it all boils down to is, again, like I said, comets all have tails, and they're like cats, and they do as they well please, okay? And that is it. Any questions? Oh, wait, before that, sorry, before the questions. Over here on this table is a bunch of free stuff. There are shadows of the sun. There are lenticulars. There's even some uh, astronomy magazine. Bay Probe, the great century, a comet of century of great comets, put out in 1999, by the way. So you can do that. You can pick up one of those. There's even posters over here. Take one of everything, please. The more you take, the less I have to pack up. All right? So now that's the last commercial. Any questions? Yes, sir. I know you already uh, had that. Last time that you tried to get close to a comet, it involved a lawn chair, weather balloons, uh, a pellet gun, and the FAA. <laughs> I have a lightsaber here. <laughs> I, I will use it. Okay. All right. Um, yes. What's the question? Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, did I mention, did I forget to talk about the one that's going to hit Mars? All righty. What time did you talk? Am I interrupting any of yours? No. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Good, 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 good. Let's see. The one that's going to hit Mars. Mars, 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 Mars. Ah, here we go. All right. Oh, come on. That's for Mars. Presented by Science. chance that Comet 2013A1 will strike Mars next year. In October of 2014, says Don Yeomans of NASA's Near-Earth Object Program at JPL. Current solutions put the odds of impact at 1 in 2000. 1 in 2000? That's pretty good. The nucleus of the comet is probably had, 1 to uh, 3 kilometers like in diameter, Earth, and it is coming in fast, all, around 56 all kilometers all per second, 125,000 miles per hour. If it does hit Mars, it would deliver as much energy as 35 million megatons of TNT, estimates humans. For comparison, the asteroid strike that ended the dinosaurs on Earth 65 million years ago was about three times as powerful, 100 million megatons. 
Another point of comparison is the meteor that exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia, in February of 2013, damaging buildings and knocking people down. The Mars comet is packing 80 million times more energy than that relatively puny asteroid. An impact wouldn't necessarily mean the end of NASA's Mars program, but it would transform the program, along with Mars itself. So I think of it as a giant climate experiment, says Michael Meyer, lead scientist for the Mars Exploration Program at NASA headquarters. An impact would loft a lot of stuff into the Martian atmosphere, dust, sand, water, and other debris. The result could be a warmer, wetter Mars than we're accustomed to today. Meyer worries that solar-powered opportunity might have a hard time surviving if the atmosphere became opake. Nuclear-powered curiosity, though, would carry on just fine. He also notes that Mars orbiters might have trouble seeing the surface, for a while at least, until the debris begins to clear. A direct okay. impact remains you can, uh, unlikely. You can finish looking at this. Paul Chodos this is NASA's the, uh... New Earth Object Program stresses that a 1 in 2,000 chance of impact means there's a 1,000... 1,999% 1, chance that it won't hit it. All right, these uh, websites are all at the NASA. Let's see where it is. A comet heads for Mars. Science at NASA. By science at Oops. NASA. Okay. All right, sorry. Back it up here again. We'll get that up there for you. Why is there such an uncertainty? Uh, because it's so far away. Again. Uh, they're working at it. It was discovered in 2012, but it was discovered like way, way, about like Comet Iceland was out past Jupiter, okay? And it was just discovered before it went technically behind the sun. Uh, so it's supposed to be coming up some more information on it here, I thought this month sometime. Uh, and it's, it's, another, it's not, not going to be one of those that's going to come from the south and go from the north. It's actually coming in this way, roughly the same direction and traveling that Mars is going at that time. So it's going, Mars is going this way and it's coming in this way too. And then it'll swing around the sun and go on back out. Okay. So they don't know yet and they don't know what the effect of Mars is going to have on it. So the, the jets that are boiled off of the sun um, as it passes near it, can that change its trajectory? Yes, but not enough to do it any good. You're talking something the size, you know, millions of zillions of tons over a long over period, a long of, time, period of, time. of time. Yeah, yeah, it might change it a little bit, okay. Uh, even the Yurkov effect on, on meteors and asteroids and stuff is enough to make an effect on it. But again, there's so much matter. You're talking something a mile across. Right. And those are those aren't very powerful jets. You know, to us they're a vacuum. They're still a vacuum. But they're a lot more than they would be in a normal vacuum in space. So uh, so that's where you go. There's a couple other ones there on the collision of Mars nearby. Even a comet Ison is going to be observed by the Martian. Uh, op by opportunity and things along those lines, because it might be visible in its sky. Okay, so they, that's what we're talking about. So you can go look at that. All right. So now let me uh, get done here. We'll answer some questions, give away some more prizes. Okay. Oh wait. Never mind. Yeah, don't unplug it. I know. All right. Let's get rid of that one. Let's go to the next one. There. Back to this one. Okay. All right, so let's answer some questions. All right, y'all ready? Can I, can I have a helper? I need a helper. I need a helper. No? All right, all right, you can come up and help. But if you help, you can't answer questions, get prizes. Is that okay? So what do you want to do? Maybe. Oh. What is this? Is this St. Louis? Okay, that's explained a lot. <laughs> He's going to be my helper. You're going to have that price, okay? We've got to answer this real quick because we've got another guy waiting. All right, first question. What was my name? I don't see any hands up. No, you already know. Yes, sir. Fred. How about you? You know? Bobby. No, what is it? Turkey vulture? Turkey vulture. She told me. What is it? Skipper. Skipper. All right, give her a prize here. Give her one of those uh, white ones, one of the white packages out there. It's okay. She's oh, she's already got one? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, then she doesn't get another one. She's got all the prizes already. So. All right, all right. We'll have to ask another question. Okay. How many ingredients did I put in the comment? One. Back there. How many? Five. Are you sure? Yeah. I count seven. But five. Yes, go ahead. Give her one. 
right? Yes, five ingredients, okay? And by the way, that was your last chance to tell me I had to find seven fingers up and missed it. All right, all right, now, out of those five ingredients, which one's probably not quite true? Yes, sir. Get your hand up. Oh, okay. Which ingredient wasn't quite true? Yes. Ammonia. No. Anybody? Well, I didn't do a good job, so never mind. Okay. What's it plenty of molasses? What? what? Yeah. What's the dead bugs. The dead bugs. All right. Give her. She can have another. One. There's more fries in here. Go ahead and give her another. All right. Give her one too. Yeah. The, poly, the dead bugs. All right. Yes. All right. Last question. What was my talk about? Which one? Ison, all right, go ahead and give him a prize. All right, everybody else, if you want to, come on up here, grab one of everything up here, carry it all the way. All right, thank you very much, and we'll see you hopefully next year.